We now Dan McClory. He's president and head of China at financial services firm Bosted and Company. Uh, Dan, we are already seeing uh, China mulling actions in response to tariffs. We've heard European leaders talking about hitting Harley Davidsons and Kentucky Bourbon with tariff increases. Talk to me about what happens if China is hit with $60 billion worth of tariffs annually. How might China respond and how will all of this play out? I think what we're seeing is just another example of President Trump being strategically unpredictable and starting off with big rhetoric in order to get a better negotiating position. And make no mistake, uh, China is extremely adept at negotiating. However, I think President Trump has been emboldened by the progress that was made evidently with North Korea, and he's attempting to use this as another lever. So, Mike, to your point, um, I don't think it's going to come to lasting um, tariffs that would invoke some type of a trade war. Um, I, I think this is being done to get a response, to perhaps garner some negotiating edge or some leverage. Uh, but I think we're far from seeing it uh, disrupt into uh, the deterioration of this economic relationship between the two most powerful countries on the globe. Can't they call this bluff? Absolutely. Absolutely that could be done. But, you know, I, I what I'd like to see is a focus on let's let's generate a bigger pie. Let's generate more trade between both nations. You know, the analogy I think of is with my wife. When I ever talk to her about we need to reduce expenses, um, it's so much more difficult than just generating more income. So why don't we talk about how we can generate more income? And there are obviously some very, very natural and appropriate ways. Um, President Trump has talked about giving U.S. technology companies greater access to the China market, less burdensome requirements for being able to operate there. That's, you know, really one of our core industries coming out of the U.S. Um, and I think from China's side, they just want to be able to have a fair deal. They don't want to be discriminated against. But when business leaders got together in Washington about a month ago, they said, you know, we really would like to see China act. We'd like to see them do something, take action, and then we'll have confidence that this is going to result uh, in, in, in resolving these issues and not just some extended uh, rhetoric between the countries. Let's talk about the climate now, because the EU is also talking about this GAFA tax, uh, hitting heavyweights in the Silicon Valley with a 3% tax, GAFA standing for Google, Apple, Facebook, and Amazon. Uh, are we going to see a lot more of this uh, in the days and weeks to come, you think? I think so, but I'm going to make the, the statement, Mike, that I, I don't think on the part of the European Union, that this is retaliation for, you know, uh, steel and aluminum tariffs uh, that are that are have been announced with great fanfare and are being backed off of. Um, I think that revolves around uh, a fairly sound principle, which is, you know, despite the fact that you don't have any physical presence in my country, you're generating revenues and, in fact, profits from your operations here or your sales here. So there ought to be some kind of a system to capture that. I mean, it's it's not too dissimilar from more than a decade ago when we weren't taxed on e-commerce sales. We were only taxed in the state where those e-commerce sales were located, where that company was headquartered. Uh, well, that went away pretty quickly, uh, and there's no longer that exemption. So um, I, I, I think you will see more of this. I don't necessarily think it's retaliation for the stance that President Trump has taken. Uh, Dan, let me just ask you one quick question, and briefly, if you can. Trump's uh, moving ahead with these aluminum and steel tariffs. He's obviously playing to his base, but there are these new ads cropping up here in the U.S. with Midwest farmers pleading with him not to go through with this because they fear the backlash. Um, is he perhaps feeding part of his base but also wounding part of his base? That's a really good point, Mike. Um, he's got to be particularly careful. Um, agriculture is huge. You know, 14 billion in soy exports to China every year from the heartland that put him in office. Um, talk about those Harley-Davidson motorcycles. Where are they made? Wisconsin. That's where Speaker Paul Ryan is from. Um, I, I think it's got to be incredibly careful. But uh, on the flip side, just remember, if there are some kind of tariffs against sorghum, you know, which is another grain, 64% uh, of the sorghum that's used to create baijiu in China comes from the U.S. So uh, there's probably a couple of considerations there to think about before that kind of retaliation takes place. Yeah, you got to have your baijiu and your bourbon, I guess, uh, all of that in play. Thanks so much, Dan McClory, uh, joining You're us welcome. from California.